Hello, my name is Dr. Dr. Wellsticks, and today we're going to be talking about Yugoloths. If you know anything about the Lower Plains, then you'll know that devils are lawful evil, and demons are chaotic evil. Well, due to alignment, there is obviously a neutral evil force, these being Yugoloths. Devils must follow their contracts, and demons want to make a deal with you, no matter what anyone tells you. On the other hand, there's this neutral evil Yugoloths. They are happy to work for you and make a deal with you, although they do not follow it. If someone were to say, offer them better wealth than what you're able to pay them, the Yugolov would swiftly pack its bags and go leave to someone else. Yugoloths were originally commissioned by Asmodeus himself. They were first created by a group of night hags. They made four tomes, called the Tomes of Keeping, where they put the true name of every Yugolov that they created. Unfortunately, these tomes have been lost throughout the years, as the hags started infighting over who gets to keep the tomes. With the tomes missing, the Yugoloths are free to do as they please. Much like every other fiend, a Yugolov can only be killed on its home plane. The Yugolov's home plane is called Gehenna. If a Yugolov is killed, then his name will permanently disappear from the tomes of keeping. Mesoloths are beetle insectoid-like creatures that have four arms and wheel tridents. They are the weakest of all Yugoloths, and they are on the bottom rung when it comes to their society. They can easily be persuaded or paid to do whatever you need. They commonly work as mercenaries or bodyguards. Like all Yugoloths, the Mesoloths' weapon attacks are magical, they have resistance to magic, as well as the ability to innately cast some spells. The Mesoloth can innately cast darkness, and dispel magic twice per day, and once per day they can cast Cloud Kill. Nykoloths are green-skinned gargoyle-type Yugoloths. They're large size and incredibly dangerous. They commonly will spend their turns teleporting around the battlefield as well as swinging their great axe. Like all Yugoloths, they have some innate spell casting, but this time it is much stronger than the Mesoloth, as at will they can produce magical darkness, dispel magic, as well as go invisible. They also have the ability to create multiple clones of themselves that they use in combat. Unlike most Yugoloths, the Nykoloths are surprisingly loyal, and while they might let someone slide if they're paid enough, they will not go out of their way to betray. Next Yugoloth is the Arcanoloth. They are the spellcasters of the Yugoloths. Arcanoloths are beings with the heads of jackals. They wear nice fancy clothes and robes and are always appear well groomed. These creatures hunt for arcane secrets and knowledge. They command legions of lesser Yugoloths into battle. Arcanoloths offer their services as diplomats and negotiators for different nations. They can speak and write in all languages, making them great for the job. Unlike standard Yugoloths, an Arcanoloth prefers to be paid in magical items and information instead of gold. This might make it a bit hard if your party's trying to get one under their sway. But, considering the fact that most campaign villains seem to have the ability to get whatever they want, I'm sure they can swing a few. Ultraloths are just aliens. They're just gray or green-skinned aliens. They also don't have mouths, yet they can somehow speak. I have no clue. But anyway, on to their abilities. Ultraloths are the strongest of all the Yugoloths. They travel to planes being mercenaries and crime lords. Ultraloths aren't really that strong in melee combat, but they more than make up for it with their amazing choices of innate spellcasting. They, like all Yugoloths, have the ability to teleport all around the battlefield. The Ultraloth also has a hypnotic gaze. This allows them to charm one creature as well as forces that one creature to be stunned, so they're unable to escape. The Ultraloth's innate spellcasting includes amazing spells like Alter Self, Dimension Door, Invisibility, Suggestion, Mass Suggestion, and Firestorm. With these abilities, there's a real good reason why the Yugoloths are at the top of the totem pole. There's also a very powerful and strong Ultraloth, but I'll be talking about them in the end of the video. Anyway, we've talked about all the Yugoloths in the Monster Manual, so now let's dive into Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes. I, halfway through editing uh, Whittlesticks here, I completely forgot Cantaloths existed. Yeah, I know. Got a real genius writing this channel, don't we? <laughs> anyway, 
Kenilof, so Yugolos, whose job it is to guard things. Yeah, that's about it. They got spiky tongues. They look like freaky dogs. I'm tired. I completely forgot about that they existed. They're guards. Dergnalofs are the brutes of the Yugolof. These insectoid-like creatures have five arms and are basically dumb brutes, but they're very good at being them. These type of Yugoloths are often hired to quell uprising and riots. These things have a whirlwind of fury, flailing their arms around, killing anything in their path while laughing maniacally. Nonetheless, they are still kind of dumb and can't handle complex tasks. While hiring one, it's best to just hire them to kill large groups of people. Living in the depths of the river Styx, we have Hydroloths. Hydroloths have two jobs, to launch amphibious assaults, as well as to collect memories from people. For underwater conflict, these guys are pros. They have swim and teleport speeds, and can swiftly go through the water. They can also steal memories. Let's say you have to get an enemy's information, like a safe code or location. Well, then you could hire a Hydroloth. They could sneak up and steal the memories of that person. Then they can come back and give you the information. Continuing on the river sticks, we have Marinoloths. They live simple lives as boat captains and farriers. Instead of being hired to slay hundreds of people or steal information, they just bring your places on their boat. Marinoloths are unmatched when it comes to most anything involving boats. They're amazing captains, and oftentimes they can be hired to pilot boats on the material plane. Their services will cost a pretty penny, but it's worth it. They can steer the boat forward, stop it from crashing, always keep it on course, and even keep it afloat despite the hull being destroyed. While not being the strongest or best in combat, these are one of the most useful Yugoloths your players will ever be able to find. Our penultimate Yugoloth is the Oinoloth. These pastoral filled creatures spell doom wherever they go. These creatures can poison entire fields and armies, if given enough time and coin. They're known to even poison entire cities. They're often hired by desperate armies that are on the brink of destruction. An odd part of these creatures is that besides the plagues that they spill, they're also commonly hired to get rid of the plagues that they've brought upon. So they're very much a double-edged sword, as just as easily as they'll poison the enemy, they could mistakenly poison you. And let's just say to lift that, it'll cost you quite a bit. Another thing is that despite the fact that they may get rid of their own poison, they always have a messed up way of healing you. Lastly is the Yagnoloth. A Yagnoloth is a Yuloth that specializes in making contracts, treaties, and any other writing. So if you need to make a treaty with another nation, or forgot to do your English essay, then you should hire a Yagnoloth. Yagnoloths have a small hand that they use for writing, and a really big hand they use for breaking your skull open. Yagnoloths are often brought in by other Yugoloths whenever making a contract with another being. They're also commonly brought in if, let's say, you were making a deal with a powerful being like an archdevil. Yagnoloths try and keep secret. They're often known to wear cloaks covering both of their hands, so that they can write with their one hand while keeping the smashing your skull open hand secretly hidden under the table. But if things go wrong, these creatures are not scared to engage in combat. Lastly is the most interesting Yugoloth, the General of Gehenna. This is an Ultraloth that has supreme power almost all Yugoloths. While all Yugoloths love making gold, they will do almost anything for the General of Gehenna. Just to be able to kiss the dirt he walks on or some other stupid idiom. Well, that's it for these fiendish foes and or friends. If you're going to use Yugoloth in your campaign, please tell me in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please like or subscribe. And I'll see you next time.